Christmas, and welcome to worship here at Flame of Faith United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Sarah McManus, and I am excited to worship with you on this Christmas Eve today as we celebrate the birth of Christ. Thank you to Bristol for leading us off and, and starting us with such beautiful music. If you are interested in our order of worship, you can go to our website, flameoffaithumc.org. If you click on the uh, online worship button, you will find the order of worship, and uh, which it will include the words of the scripture, it will include the words of the songs, and various uh, parts of our service tonight. Also, I hope that you uh, have gathered your candles and glow sticks for our silent night at the end of the service, but also gather your communion supplies so that we can join together in at God's holy table this night. I now invite you to sing along with O Come All Ye Faith. and Billy for leading us in our song, O Come All Ye Faithful, and for gathering us to sing to God this day. I invite you now into a time of prayer. Beloved in Christ, this Christmas Eve, it is our duty and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and to go in heart and mind to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us hear again from Holy Scripture 
the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our sin until the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. Let us make this house of prayer, these houses of prayer, glad with our carols of praise. But first, let, because this of all things would rejoice in Jesus' heart, let us pray to him for the needs of the whole world and all his people. For peace upon the earth he came to save, for love and unity within the one church he did build, for goodwill among all peoples. And particularly at this time, let us remember the poor, the hungry, the cold, the oppressed, the sick, and them that mourn, the lonely and unloved, the aged and the little children, and all who know not the Lord Jesus or who, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven, in the words that Christ himself taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Almighty God bless us with divine grace. Christ give us the joy of everlasting life. And unto the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring to all. Amen. I invite Joan Brickner now to share with us in our lighting of the Advent candles. Hello, my name is Joan Brickner, and I am representing for this video Flame of Faith Church in West Fargo, and I have a reading from the church related to Advent. Advent hope moves us. Advent love leads us. Advent joy stirs us. Advent peace stills us that we might affirm our King Jesus. It is time we set flame to this Advent affirmation by lighting the Christ candle. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. He was the long-awaited Messiah whose coming was prophesied. The same Jesus lives today in our hearts. He deserves our highest loyalty and total commitment. In Jesus Christ, our hope is fulfilled. Our love is consummated. Our joy is complete and our peace is sealed. Rejoice. A savior is born. A savior is born indeed. Joy to the world. Amen. Thank you, Joan. And now we turn to a time and reading of the beginning. The beginning, Genesis chapter one, verses one through five and 26 through 31, and chapter three, verses 21 through 24. First this, God created the heavens and earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. God spoke, light, and light appeared. God saw that light was good and separated light from dark. God named the light day. He named the dark night. It was evening. It was morning. Day one. God spoke, let us make human beings in our image. 
make them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of earth. God created human beings. He created them godlike. Reflecting God's nature, he created them male and female. God bless them, prosper, reproduce, fill earth, take charge. Be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air, for every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. Then God said, I have given you every sort of seed-bearing plant on earth and every kind of fruit-bearing tree, given them to you for food. To all animals and all birds, everything that moves and breathes, I give whatever grows out of the ground for food. And there it was. God looked over everything he had made. It was so good, so very good. It was evening, it was morning, day six. Heaven and earth were finished down to the last detail. God made leather clothing for Adam and his wife and dressed them. God said, the man has become like one of us, capable of knowing everything, ranging from good to evil. What if he now should reach out and take fruit from the tree of life and eat and live forever? Never, this cannot happen. So God expelled them from the Garden of Eden and sent them to work on the ground, the same dirt out of which they'd been made. He threw them out of the garden and stationed angel cherubim and a revolving sword of fire east of it, guarding the path to the tree of life. Thank you, Jennifer. Our next carol will be Let There Be Peace on Earth, sang by Jerry Ellingson. Let us walk. 
for sharing your music, Jerry. Next, we hear more of the story as Jim Kelly tells us of Covenant. Overwhelmed, Abram fell flat on his face. Then God said to him, This is my covenant with you. You'll be the father of many nations. Your name will no longer be Abram, but Abraham meaning that I am making you the father of many nations. I'll make you a father of fathers. I'll make nations from you. Kings will issue from you. I'm establishing my covenant between me and you, a covenant that includes your descendants, a covenant that goes on and on and on a covenant that commits me to be your God and the God of your descendants. And I'm giving you and your descendants this land where you now just camp this holy country of Cana to own forever. And I'll be your God. Thank you, Jim, for sharing the story. Let us now sing together, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Thou root of Jesse's tree 
Now let us hear Cindy's words as she tells the story of prophecy. Isaiah 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For those who lived in a land of deep shadows, light, sunbursts of light. For a child has been born, for us, the gift of a son, for us. He'll take over the running of the world. His names will be Amazing Counselor, Strong God, Eternal Father, Prince of Wholeness. His ruling authority will grow and there will be no limits to the wholeness he brings. He'll rule from the historic David throne over that promised kingdom. He'll put that kingdom on a firm footing and keep it going with fair dealing and right living beginning now and lasting always. The zeal of God of the angel armies will do all of this. Thank you, Cindy. Let us sing now together, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Let us hear Jansen tell us the story of the foretold. A green shoot will sprout from Jesse's stump, from his roots a budding branch. The life-giving Spirit of God will hover over him, the Spirit that brings wisdom and understanding, the Spirit that gives direction and builds strength, the Spirit that instills knowledge and fear of God. Fear of God will be all his joy and delight. He won't judge by appearances, won't decide on the basis of hearsay. He'll judge the needy by what is right, render decisions on earth's poor with justice. His words will bring everyone to awed attention. A mere breath from his lips will topple the wicked. Each morning, he'll pull on sturdy work clothes and boots and build righteousness and faithfulness in the land. The wolf will romp with the lamb, the leopard sleep with the kid. Calf and lion will eat from the same trough, and a little child will tend them. Cow and bear will graze the same pasture. Their calves and cubs grow up together. 
and the lion eats straw like the ox. Sing together with us, O little town of Bethlehem. Still we see the light Above thy deep and dreamless sleep The silent stars go by Yet in the dark street shineth The everlasting light The hopes and fears of all the years Are met in thee Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. O morning stars together proclaim the holy birth and praise the sea. The King and peace to all the earth. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of His heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us. We pray, cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide in us, our Lord Emmanuel. friends welcome to our children's time you know our tradition on Christmas Eve is to read a story uh, I wasn't able to do that this year so today we're I'm gonna tell the story of one of our hymns it's called the friendly beasts now if you have any of these stuffies or anything in your house I want you to get them close so I need you to find a uh, a stable or a manger. Now the manger in our house, here's baby Jesus in a manger, sleeping in his swaddling clothes. Uh, I need you to find a donkey. Now I don't have a good donkey. I don't have a good donkey, but I do have a horse. So here's my horse. You getting your stuff and then you need a cow now this one's from one of our manger scenes it's a nice little cow that hangs out and we'll just put him up by the camera and then you need a sheep now if you can find a sheep with curly horn that's the best and then a dove now in our house we don't really have any doves but i do have this super um colorful guy whose name is rainbow face rainbow tummy and so um, he's gonna be our dove today now I want you to gather them all together and we're gonna start with Jesus our brother strong and good was humbly born in a stable rude and the friendly beasts around him stood Jesus our brother strong and good I said the donkey 
All right, so you got to get your donkey, shaggy and brown. I carried his mother up hill and down. I carried his mother to Bethlehem town. I said the donkey, shaggy and brown. I said the cow, all white and red. I gave him my manger, so he normally sleeps in the manger, for his bed. I gave him my hay to pillow his head. I said the cow, all white and red. I said the sheep, said the, with the curly horn. I gave him my wool for his blanket warm. He wore my coat on Christmas morn. I said the sheep with the curly morn. I said the dove from rafters high. I cooed him to sleep so that he would not cry. I said the sheep, or <laughs> we cooed him to sleep, my mate and I. I said the dove from the rafters high. Thus every beast did some good by some good spell in the stable dark was glad to tell of the gift he gave Emmanuel. The gift he gave Emmanuel. So you can tell the story of Jesus using your stuffies at home. The birds that sang to him, the donkey that carried his mother, the, the cow that gave up his, uh, his manger. All of these places were a part of God's story. Isn't that cool? Just like I bet you have animals at home that are a part of your story. Will you pray with me? God of us all, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the animals that cared for him. Thank you that he cares for us. Amen. We'll see you later. Just as we share together in story and song, so too now we share of ourselves. We invite you now to give of your gifts this Christmas Eve. In our offering, you can give at flameoffaithumc.org or you can give uh, in the Give Plus app. Let us pray now over these gifts. God of us all on this night and day of giving, we give to you. We give our hearts, our song, our voices lifted high. So too we give of our funds that this church and these people may do your work now and forever. Amen. Now hear the story of the Annunciation. Hi, I'm Sean, and today I'll be reading you a story from Luke. Luke 1, 26-38 In the six months following Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph, and the virgin's name, Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Good morning. You're beautiful with God's beauty. Beautiful inside and out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaken, wonder, wondering what was behind a greeting like that. But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to the son and call him uh, his name Jesus. He will be great. He called son, be called son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will rule Jacob's house forever, no end ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, but how? I've never slept with a man. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest hover over you. Therefore, a child uh, you bring to birth will be called Holy, Son of God. And Mary said, Yes, I see it all now. I am the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let it be with me, just as you say. Then the angel left her. Thank you, Sean, for sharing in our story. Now hear Megan's version of Mary Did You Know. <laughs> Did 
you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you deliver will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby Walk where angels trod When you kiss your little baby You kiss the face of God Oh Mary, did you know Oh Mary, did you know Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nation? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect land? The sleeping child you're holding is the grave. Thank you, Megan, for sharing your beautiful voice. Now we turn to the birth of Christ from Susan. Birth. Luke 2, 1 through 7. About that time, Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census when Corderius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral town home to be accounted for. So Joseph went to the Galilean town of Nazareth up in Bethlehem in Judah, David's town for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, his fiancée, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger, because there was no room in the hostel. Let us sing now the first Noel. There is 
is nothing more important than these words. Christ is born. In the midst of everything else, that's it. The good, the bad, all of it. Christ is born and God is present in our world. And all are invited to this, the table of God. Regardless of your relationship with God, regardless of your church membership, regardless of what you bring to God's table, you are welcome. You are more than welcome. You are invited to God's table. All who seek out God, all who seek out God's love. Let us come together and welcome Christ into our hearts and lives this Christmas Eve and into the Christmas season. God is here. God is with you in our, your homes, in our homes. Let us turn to God's table. You see, Christ the Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love, and we have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness. You brought forth life on this earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As the poverty of a stable, Jesus was born. So by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of a woman on that night so long ago, so on this night in which we celebrate and on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gathered here and at home and on these gifts of bread and cup, of cracker and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with all the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. I now invite you and your family, those who are gathered together, to participate and share in communion today. body of Christ broken for you, the very cup of Christ given for you. Let us turn to God in prayer. In this taste and in this touch, we come to you now and always. Amen. Here now as Lori brings us some special music, a strange way to save the world. Why him with all the rulers? 
As we continue our story, let us hear the story of the shepherds from Darlis. Luke 2, 8 through 14. There were sheep herders camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angels stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid, I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody, worldwide. A Savior has just been born in David's town. A Savior who is Messiah and Master. This is what you're to look for. A baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. At once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. Let us sing now one of my favorite Christmas hymns in the bleak midwinter. Let us continue to hear of other travelers, as Lydia tells us. Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. 
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem village, Judah territory, this was during Herod's kingship, a band of scholars arrived in Jerusalem from the east. They asked around, where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews? We observed a star in the eastern sky that signaled his birth. We're on pilgrimage to worship him. When word of their inquiry got to Herod, he was terrified, and not Herod alone, but most of Jerusalem as well. Herod lost no time. He gathered all the high priests and religion scholars in the city together and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? They told him, Bethlehem, Judah territory. The the prophet Micah wrote it plainly. It's you, Bethlehem, in Judah's land, no longer bringing up the rear. From you will come the leader who will shepherd, rule my people, my Israel. Herod then arranged a secret meeting with the scholars from the east. Pretending to be devout as they were, he got them to tell exactly when the birth announcement star appeared. He told them the prophecy about Bethlehem and said, Go find this child. Leave no stone unturned. As soon as you find him, send word and I'll join you at once in your worship. Instructed by the king, they set off. Then the star appeared again, the same star they had seen in the eastern skies. It led them on until it hovered over the place of the child. They could hardly contain themselves. They were in the right place. They had arrived at the right time. They entered the house and saw the child in the arms of Mary, his mother. Overcome, they kneeled and worshipped him. They opened their luggage and presented gifts, gold, frankincense, myrrh. In a dream, they were warned not to report back to Herod. So they worked out another route, left the territory without being seen, and returned to their own country. Let us sing together, and this one you've got to sing loud. We three kings... now of the word from Alex. The word was first, the word present to God, God present to the word. The word was God, in readiness for God from day one. 
Everything was created through him. Nothing, not one thing, came into being without him. What came into existence was life, and the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness couldn't put it out. There once was a man, his name John, sent by God to point out the way to the life light. He came to show everyone where to look, who to believe in. John himself was not the light. He was there to show the way to the light. The life light was the real thing. Every person entering life he brings into light. He was in the world, the world was there through him, and yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his people, but they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, who believed he was who he claimed, and who would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God selves. These are the God begotten, not the blood begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten. The word became flesh and blood, and moved into the neighborhood. We saw with the glory of our own eyes, the one-of-a-kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, a true from start to finish. Now gather your candles together and let us sing Silent Night together with voices from afar.
through the benediction this day. May the God who comes as a little child, may the God of peace and grace, may the God who shows us a world that we can make better, may the God who invites us to his table across time and space, may that God fill us with that holy, courageous, joyful love that we may go into the world changed by God and blessed to live and grow and be together. Let us now sing together joy to the world as our blessing onto the world this day. Come. Uh-huh.